Hey, it's Robin Nolan, and in this video, you're going to learn the technique that I use to make octaves sound really clean and crispy. This is a video response I made to Gypsy Jazz Club member Matt Hagle, who was having a problem with his fretting hand making octaves sound clean. And I'm happy to say that this video has really helped him and he's sounding great now. Um, enjoy the video and if you would like to join the Gypsy Jazz Club, get private coaching from me, support from the community, enjoy five live events every month and access to over 100 hours of Gypsy Jazz resources to help you really learn this style in a fun way, then take your 14-day free trial at gypsyjazzclub.com. We would love to see you inside. Okay, for now, let's get these octaves sounding crispy. Hey Matt, it's Robin getting back to you on your question about octaves and the problem you're having when you're playing with a pick to not let the other strings sound when you, when you play an octave, which uh, is a common issue and I get a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to show you in this video the fingerings I use and which fingers I use to mute the incidental strings, okay? So you're saying easy to play the octave when you pluck the two strings with your right hand because you're only playing the two strings that make up the octave. So never a problem with the other strings. But you're saying that when you use a pick and you play through the chord, uh, it's hard to stop the other fingers, uh, sorry, not the other fingers, the other strings from ringing. So this is what I do. Uh, so let's look at each octave. So if we take a G, um, first finger on the fifth fret, pinky on the eighth fret, there's a G octave, right? Um, and when you play it with a pick, to get this sound, right, that you can only hear the two notes, right, because right, muted, muted, there's the G, muted, G, muted. Uh, so, you've got the two fingers there. Now, it's pretty natural, actually, so you don't have to think about it too much, but what's happening is the second finger here, this finger, is stopping the bottom E string ringing, right? And stopping the A string ringing, right? So that finger is what's doing that. Then you've got your G. And then the G string itself is being stopped by the first finger somewhere under there. So the first finger is muting the G. Then you've got the, the octave, and then the first finger, again, is muting the top E. So basically, the only fingers that are... This finger's not doing anything, the third. The second finger is muting the E, A string. And the first finger is playing the G string, but also muting the B and the E string. Okay, so then you've got mute with the first, second finger, mute with the second finger, the G with the first finger, mute with the first finger, the octave G with the pinky, and again, the first finger, mute in that top E string. And this means that you can slide that up and down. So if you're in G minor, you can go, right, and you're not worried about the other strings ringing. And that's your question, right? Because then you can play with the kind of style. use the right hand to really go through all the strings to give it that rhythmical drive. Um, so if we swap over to the other strings, if you take the C note here, you've got the fifth fret with the first finger, you've got the pinky on the C, eighth fret, right? And it's basically the same. You've got the, you've got the second finger muting the E, A and D string, and then you've got the C with the first finger. Again, the first finger is muting the the B string there, and you've got the pinky there. So again, this finger is muting, and this finger is muting there, okay? So you've got C, even when you play across all the strings. So, so it kind of looks like you're playing a chord, but in fact, this is the main finger that's muting the strings, and the first finger itself. So even if you just take a C there, right, you can hear that it's just the C note, and not the... Not, not that. So if you just kind of poise the finger to get it right there, and then add the second finger to stop the bass notes ringing, right? 
Uh, so there's the G, there's the C. If you take the D octave, where well, you've only got a two fret gap, right? I play the octave with the pinky, um, taking the D. A lot of people would play it like that, but I use the pinky, right? And again, the second finger stopping the bottom E ringing. There's the D, and the and the the first finger again is stopping the string below that. Then you've got the D, and right so. So again, it's the same fingers doing their jobs of muting. When you play the bottom string, A to A, for example, uh, obviously the second fingers, there's no string to mute below that, but you've got A note. The first finger is muting the A string. There's the A, and the first finger is doing all the muting there, right? So just practice really slowly, just going through A, D, G, C, so across the fretboard like that, and just play a two, three, four, and just do it, right, until you hear that there's no overtone, right. And then once you get confident, your hand will just go in automatically in the right position. I recommend going through a minor blues uh, to make it a musical exercise and just play through a, a 12 by a 12 bar minor blues and just go like C minor G minor E flat try through a minor blues to see if you're getting it right. Let me know how you go with that, Matt. And if you need any more detailed explanation, happy to make another video or somehow maybe we could draw a diagram or something. See you on the Zoom call today.